Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. I will never take another driving lesson from you as long as I live. Oh, perfect. Because I will never give you another lesson as long as I live, which will be a lot longer now that I'm never getting into a car that you're driving. <laughs> you are the worst teacher ever. Even worse than Miss Lehman in second grade. She let the whole class eat paint. Oh, well, I have never seen a bigger menace behind the wheel. And that includes after prom when Kevin Martin drove me home with a keg in his lap. Ugh, I'm going upstairs to recover. Yeah, and I'm gonna recover too with a bottle of this. Nuh-uh, I'm going commando tonight. <laughs> Looks like today's lesson went a little better. Yeah, it was the best one yet. I guess you're stuck with me. Wait a minute. You lured me in here with the promise of moussaka. I got moussaka. Yummy moussaka right here, all right? But no one's getting any of this till we clear the air. I'm not talking to her. Well, I'm not talking to her more. All right, look, if you two guys don't start talking, you're gonna kiss the moussaka goodbye. Wait, all stop! All right, all right, all right. We'll talk. Just don't hurt the moussaka. What the heck happened during that driving lesson, huh? How'd it get so bad? Well, I generously took the afternoon off to teach this one here. And, um, well, let's just say I was completely calm when I set foot in that car. All right, honey, now you see that truck? Yes. Okay, now you're gonna pass it on the left, so watch your speed. Watch my speed? You told me to keep my eyes on the road. Speed or road, which is it? You can do both. <laughs> it's too much. You drive. Oh, okay. All right, it's, it, you know what? It's gonna be all right. That is complete and utter fiction. She was impossible from the moment we stepped in the car. You're gonna kill us! <laughs> there are no other cars around. I don't wanna die! In this outfit! <laughs> All right, I know what happened here. Two women got in a car. <laughs> look, look, look. You two just need to share in the responsibility, apologize to each other, and move on. I'm not apologizing. And I did nothing wrong, but to show that I'm the bigger person, how about this? I will take you for another lesson tomorrow, and I will fashion myself a dress made out of airbags. Wait a minute, I thought you said you would never, ever teach Lennox to drive again. Yeah, well, I also said I never drink during the daytime. Some things are said in anger. <laughs> what do you say? I say... No. I'll take the bus. Forever. Just be back. Trust me. Lennox is not a bus girl. One slow, stinky ride past the fish market, she'll come around. Or maybe Lennox just needs a fresh start. You know, maybe she needs a new teacher. Somebody a little calmer. You know, somebody not, uh... Well, just not you. You? You got me, baby. Use me. Oh, say things like that. It makes me tummy queasy. Look, I am a way better driver than you, okay? I mean, I don't, you know, like to brag. You love to brag. No, 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 no. It sounds like I'm bragging, but really, I'm just telling you how great I am. These are all just facts. <laughs> I am a highly skilled driver, all right? I even took one of those evasive action driving courses. Why? So you can parallel park while the KGB shoots at you? You don't park while they're shooting at you. You take corners on two wheels. <laughs> Look, I, I have a gift for teaching. You know, we all have our strengths, all right? Yours is, um, sleeping in. That's true, I am great at that. Mm. But, you know, this is not about who's the better teacher. That's all it's about. So let's quit the back and forth and just give me the car keys. No, this is my parenting moment. I want the joy of teaching Lennox to drive. Joy? You guys are both miserable. Sure, now. You know, life's milestones are always misery to go through, but once you get past them, you remember them fondly. And for moments like that, you don't ask for help from the household staff. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, staff? Did, um, did you just call me the S-word? <laughs> I have a lot of S-words for you. And anyway, trust me, I do not need your help teaching my niece how to drive. All right, fine, I'll stay out of it. What other S-words do you have for me? How much time you got? Is one of them sexy? <laughs> yes, yes, that is the one I use the most. That and stilluted. Hey, Mel. Oh, you're all dressed up. Where are you headed? Stephanie's picking me up. We're going estate sale shopping. Yep, you gotta look broke when you're lowballing for Grandma's silver. Jeez, Burke, what's next? You gonna go graveside and yank out some gold teeth? <laughs> hey, will you move your car, by the way, because you're blocking me in? Oh, here, why don't you just take it? And while you're at it, fill her up. Right away, Mom. Yes, after all, I am the staff. <laughs> you like me, British? 
I barely like you American. <laughs> Hey, bud. I know it doesn't matter to you, man, but I got you clean close. Here. Hey, Joe. I bet you're wondering what all this is here. No, no, not at all. I didn't. I, I, I didn't even notice all those pretty lady shoes that you're playing with. See, it's just, uh, just kind of a project of mine. Yeah. Taking pictures of your aunt's shoes. Did she ask you to do that? Yeah. I mean, no, no. I volunteered. I'm just taking pictures and putting them on the outside of the boxes so she knows what she has. So you like playing with lady shoes? Organizing them? Posing them? Wearing them? No, 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 no. No, they're much too small. I could never fit my size 11s into these delicate peep toe pumps. I'm guessing. Okay, kid, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna put your laundry down here and I'm gonna uh, just accept you the the way that you are. Thanks, Joe. Close the door behind you. Oh, God, yeah, good and tight. I'll tell you, a few more lessons from me and you're gonna ace your driver's test. And then when your aunt asks, how did she do it? I'm gonna say, well, actually, uh, I did it. And everybody wins. How does Aunt Mel win? Technically, she doesn't. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you, you just passed the house. Oh, can't we drive around the block just one more time? No, mm -mm. no, we have to, um, Get home before your aunt does. Why? Um, why? Because these are, these are secret lessons. Secret in what way? Secret from your aunt. Because she kind of demanded that I never, ever teach you how to drive. Kind of demanded? You know how competitive she is. I mean, it would kill her to know that I'm doing a much better job than she would, so... So we're keeping it a secret, but it's for her. It's gonna give you a great opportunity to practice driving in reverse anyway, okay? So, if she finds out that you're teaching me how to drive, we're both in trouble? No, we're not gonna get in trouble because she's not gonna find out. Just relax. Now look, check both mirrors. Check your blind spots, all right? Watch out for uh, other pedestrians and, you know, other cars. <laughs> and mailboxes. <laughs>
<laughs> it doesn't really count unless you say it all together. Mel's a better driver than Joe. <laughs> this Chardonnay pairs well with humiliation. <laughs> hey, slow down, sport. You're coming to a door. Very nice work on my shoes. <sighs> so now that the job's done, can you sign this form for school? Wait a minute. Wait, this shoe project took you, what, 10 hours? Yeah, your school requires a full, legitimate 20 hours. You can't fake this. It's community service. But I photographed a closet full of shoes. My hands smell like feet. But what more do you want? 10 more hours. Yeah, you're gonna have to go through all my garments. You know, check everything for holes, tears, rips, snags, and runs. Oh, and pay special attention to the pantyhose. <laughs> pantyhose? I mean, Joe already saw me photographing your shoes. He thinks that I'm... God knows what he thinks. Oh, they keep us on the down low, you know? The less Joe knows about our little arrangement, the better. He'll never understand how this is true community service. I'm a little fuzzy on that, too. Um, anytime I'm not wasting in my closet, I can be serving the people of Toledo. You know, every snag and tear that you find is another constituent email answered or a curb repainted. So by digging through your underwear drawer, I'm serving the greater good? <sighs> Finally, someone understands. <laughs> Lennox, it's fine. Oh, that's it, Joe. No more secret driving lessons. It's too risky. You did great, though. You were like a pro out there. I mean, you didn't hit a single thing. Yeah, but... Aunt Mel saw us. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. I swear that was her car that we passed. That was not her car. There are thousands of cars out there that look just like that that are being poorly driven by blonde-haired women. I can't do this anymore. How are you going to learn how to drive, huh? Maybe. I won't. I just know she's going to find out. She is not going to find out. You were giving your aunt way too much credit, all right? If she knew aunt the stuff that I got away with. I mean, yeah, Mel. Mm-hmm. Caught that rat up in the attic, and um, I let it go free in the wild. And I know tonight it's at home having a nice dinner with his wife and kids. <laughs> Relax, all right? In a couple weeks, it's all gonna be over, and you're gonna pass that test. Oh, what test? Um... The, the math test. She's got a math test with numbers and shapes and whatnot. Oh, I didn't know you had a test coming up. I do. I do. I, I swear I do. Yep. Don't look at me. I have to go study. Stop asking me questions about math. <laughs> She's 16 years old. Will you just let her have her own math life, please? I think this is about something else entirely. What? No. I bet she's still upset about that debacle of a driving lesson we had. You're right. You know what? You are You are absolutely right. That's, that's what it's about, 100%. You. <laughs> Cannot get anything by Mel Burke. Roser, I'm so sorry. I've been meaning to come over and offer my condolences for your mailbox. Why didn't you? Well, because I have, you know, like a life. <laughs> I don't. That's why I'm here. <laughs> nice place. I've only ever seen it through your mail slot. That's not creepy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm really sorry, and I want to pay for the damages. Oh, oh, your, your houseboy brought over a check, but it's for the wrong amount. It's not $50. It's $150. What? For that piece of... Americana? And let me uh, just write you another check. And you should think twice before letting Mr. Muscles give your niece another driving lesson. Clearly, he has no idea what he's doing. Lennox was driving? When she wasn't crashing. <laughs> and Joe was teaching. If you could call it that. Don't you have a clue what goes on in your house? Apparently, I don't. <laughs> Ryder, look at what your aunt got you, buddy. <laughs> it's not what it looks like, really. You know what, dude? You really... You really gotta start locking this door. <laughs> hey, so I just found out that after dinner, your aunt has a city council meeting. So what do you say you get behind the wheel again, huh? We do a little freeway. How does that sound? How are you so calm about this? I'm freaking out, but it's almost like you're enjoying the lie. I am a little. No, I'm sorry. I am a lot. <laughs> Look, just do what I do and act natural, okay? Right. Hey, Lennox. Ah! <laughs> Slippery silverware. <laughs> sorry. Well, that's okay, honey. It's a perfectly normal thing to do, you know, to get all jumpy when somebody just says hi. <laughs> Can you pull yourself together, please? But she knows. She knows. <laughs> she doesn't know anything. 
Hey, listen, honey, I was thinking after dinner, maybe we could uh, take a driving lesson. I, uh, I thought you had a meeting tonight. No, no, meeting was canceled. Yeah, um, funny, some people knew about it for days and kept it from me. I mean, they knew the truth and they didn't tell me. Don't you hate that? Don't you find that hurtful? <laughs> maybe, you know, they wanted to tell you the truth, but they were forbidden. Or maybe they did it because it was the best thing for everybody. You know what? I can't take you out driving. My car's not here. It's getting repaired. Oh, yeah. You know what? Let me know how much it costs to uh, bang out that ding, all right? Yeah, uh, it's not a ding. It's more than a ding, Joe. It's a dong. What? Yeah, my mechanic said that, you know, that little accident you had knocked the rear axle completely out of alignment. He says it's going to cost $3,000 to repair it. $3,000? Yeah. Three and then thousand. But... That's what Joe makes in, like, ten years. Thank you, Lennox. Look, um, you, you, know, you know what? This is my problem, so let me handle this, okay? And why don't you go in the other room here, and I'll take care of this by myself. Thank you. Joe, it's not fair. I know, I know. Life's not fair, sweetie. Thank you. All right, uh, so look, I... You know, I'll... I'll, I'll pay for the whole $3,000. No, no, Joe, you know what? You could have lied. I mean, you could have told me that the car got hit by someone else in a parking lot, but you didn't. No, you were honest with me, and I want to pay for it, okay? Good Joe. Honest Joe. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel right about that. No, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back, okay? 100 bucks a week for 30 weeks. Ugh, doesn't seem very fair. I mean, won't you owe me interest, too? 100 bucks a week for 40 weeks. Well, and I'll need a rental car while it's getting repaired, and I like a sunroof. 50 weeks, okay? It was me! I was the one driving. I killed that mailbox. Joe took me out for secret lessons. Oh, my God. All this studying is making her insane. Go upstairs, will you, Lennox? We got... I... That one is... Joe, hmm? Mrs. Roser told me the truth. Mrs. Roser? You're gonna believe Mrs. Roser? That woman watches me clean through the mail slot. Okay, no changing the subject. I asked you to do me one little favor. I asked you not to teach Lennox to drive. How hard is it to not do something? What's the big deal? You know, you teach her, the, the better guy teaches her as long as she passes the test. No, that's not what this is about. What the hell is it about, then? It's... it's... You wouldn't understand. This is why you gotta lie. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Burke? Nothing. Burke? Burke, we're not married. You can't give me the silent treatment. <laughs> is it about the rat? Look, I, I was very kind. You didn't feel a thing. You know who taught me how to drive, Joe? Charles, my father's chauffeur. Well done, Miss Burke. Very nice job, Miss Burke. That was a pedestrian, Miss Burke. <laughs> and when we were done, Charles tipped his hat and asked me to sign his time card. Have made the staff teach you how to drive? That's... that's a little cold. I just wanted to give Lennox the memory of learning to drive from a loving relative. You know, something I wish someone had done for me. Why didn't you tell me that from the beginning? I mean, if I... you know, if I had known that, I wouldn't have swept in there and taken away your moment. I mean, you know, now I feel like a total... Wad. Well... Jerk. I mean... Dipstick. Hey. <laughs> Perk? I appreciate the apology. But look, as parental -ish units, you know, we have to be completely honest with each other. We can't be sneaking around. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up, back up. You just called me a parental-ish unit. When did I get promoted from household staff? You're more than staff. You're staff plus. No, you're basically my co-parent person. Co-parent? That's pretty good. I'm not gonna put that on my resume or anything. <laughs> and as co-parents, you can't be doing things behind my back. From now on, you can only do things to my front. I just got a little sick right there. You know what I mean? No more secrets. I got it. Okay? Hey, and if you're interested, um, I actually made another moussaka and I hid it in the vegetable crisper. We have a vegetable crisper? Well, yeah. It's a little drawer at the bottom of the fridge. Oh, the bacon holder. All done, Aunt Mel. 20 hours of community service. I never want my arm inside your pantyhose again. Because I'm more of a shoe man myself. What's going on here? Uh, we have, we just, uh, what is it we have, Ryder? 
Not community service, that's for sure. <laughs> Give me this. Dear Grant High Administration, Ryder Scanlon has completed 20 hours of volunteer community service to the city of Toledo, authorized by the Honorable Mel Burke. So cataloging shoes and organizing pantyhose is community service? Let me see that. <clears throat> yeah, it says it is. See, if she doesn't have to spend time in her closet, then curbs get painted and Toledo wins. She explains better. Thanks, Ryder. Well, I'm gonna go upstairs now because um, my hours are done. No more secrets, huh? Starting now. Hey, how was your driving lesson with Aunt Mel? Good, good. Hardly anything happened. By the way, is Joe around? No, I think he went to the gym. Did he now? We're good. Anybody what you saw here today, you'll wind up like the sun. Wow, who would go in Lennox? Hey, I wasn't the one driving. Well, I wouldn't have hit the sign if you hadn't been shouting at me. I was shouting, look out for the stop sign. Can you help us carry this to the garage? We're going to wrap it in an oriental rug and bury it so Joe will never know. Joe will never know what? We'll never know how much I value him as a co-parent. Please accept this keychain as a token of my esteem. <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. So, Mom, you know how endless a kitchen remodel can be. I never want to go through that again. Yes, but it's all worth it when it's done. When will it be finished? <laughs> it's finished. Really? So, all this is intentional. <laughs> hey, slow down there, you two. I got some solid food coming here. <laughs> and it's so nice to finally meet you, Monica. You know, put a face to the name. What brought you to town? Well, I was waiting for a special occasion. Like a wedding. But who are we kidding? I'm not going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Mom. Not married, still single. Can't point that out enough. <laughs> I guess Mr. Wright must have taken a wrong turn. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, will you go um, tell the kids that we're ready to eat? The children are going to join us for dinner? At the same table? Yeah, we try to all eat together, you know, like a family. And you sit with us, too? I know. It's nuts around here. Well, no husband and no children of your own, but still a full table. Oh, oh, it's like a play. A sad little play. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me, Mom. You really do. Lennox, dinner. And you too, uh, young man. How do you put up with that? Oh, what? You mean our little mother-daughter back and forth? She just has a sarcastic sense of humor. No, I have a sarcastic sense of humor, all right? She's... she's mean. <laughs> you just have to laugh at all. Yeah? Or in your case, uh, scratch it off? Well, it's no big deal. I just, I get hives every once in a while. Like when? You know, like, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day. <laughs> Burke, come on, it's so obvious. All the stuff you're laughing off, you're actually spelling out in tiny red dots there on your arm. Let me see this. What does this say? Oh, yeah, look at that. Help me. <laughs> oh, look what this arm says. Butt out. It's all good. All good. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. As far as I all good. All good. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. I guess you're stuck with me. Just grab something. We gotta leave. I need breakfast. You can eat next when Grandma is gone. What are you guys doing up? Going to school. At 6 a.m.? Yeah, we like to be there when it opens. Yeah, it's really cool when they unchain the gates and wake up all the homeless guys. You're doing all this to avoid seeing your grandmother, aren't you? I cannot listen to her criticize another one of my outfits and tell me that I'm asking for it. No, she still does not know my name. She calls me Tall Boy. Well, you could help her out, you know, wear a name tag or something. Oh my God, lights. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hold on. This is not cereal, this is croutons. Close enough. <laughs> hey, Joe. I love this time of day, don't you? You've never seen this time of day. Not true. I used to stumble home at this hour all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to work. Why don't you stop sneaking around and avoid your mother and just admit that your relationship with her is pretty screwed up? Because then I'd have to deal with it. Avoiding your mother is not healthy. There's nothing unhealthy about it. 
All right, all right, look. Sure, I wish I had a better relationship with my mother, but I don't. There's nothing I can do about it. So I've made peace with that, see? Peace. Yeah, I see a piece of skin hanging off right there. You know, you'd live a lot longer if you actually had a real conversation with her. We're Burks. Burks don't do that. Bongos do. Rumor is the whole next semester is going to be Pilates or Zumba. Anything without flying balls or sticks coming at me. I really like my nose where it is. <laughs> All right, ladies, for the next two months, we will eat, sleep, and crap soccer. <laughs> this week, head in the ball. I need a volunteer. You, Glickman. Oh. Atta girl, next time use less face. Okay, take a lap and then 45 minutes of headers. Come on. I am so not doing this. Well, you can't get out of it. Coach Dahlman only excuses you if you're dead or dying. And even then, you better have a note from the coroner. Come on, Miller Scanlon, look alive. Um, listen, Coach Dahlman, I need to be excused from PE today. That's not a problem. Just show me your obituary. <laughs> it's, you know, my period. Please, we women can do whatever we want on our period. We can climb mountains, we can declare war, we can even wear white stretch pants. So if it's your period, you can give me an extra 20 laps for starters. No, 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 I, I don't have my period. It's not my period. Really? Yeah, I so do not have my period. I wish I had my period. Oh. Oh, do you mean you're pregnant? You said it. Honey, if you are, you should definitely not be out here playing soccer. Oh, well, I guess you know best. Yes, I do, Scanlon. Okay, you just get some homework done, put your feet up, text your baby daddy. <laughs> Come on, you red light girls! Shh! Shake that ass! My goodness, everyone here gets up so early. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> Then it's time for a big, bubbly glass of breakfast. <laughs> Did Mel say when she was coming home? Uh, it's Tuesday, council day. She'll be home at 7th. And it's not likely she has a date, so 7 it will be. <laughs> wow, you even throw shots at her when she's not here, huh? <laughs> shots? Are you referring to our little mother-daughter back and forth? You know, that little back and forth, I think, is um, sometimes pretty hurtful to Mel. My, the staff does voice its opinion around here, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes, it does. Yeah. And another thing that um, it's curious about is, um, it's been two years since you came to your daughter's house. And you'd like to know why I'm here? Yeah, I really would. I'm here because my other daughter is in prison, and I thought it would be nice to spend a little time with my family while my husband, Russell, is in Mexico bedding a 28-year-old yoga instructor. <laughs> That's some new information. <laughs> and it's our anniversary tomorrow. That's my gift from Russell. Betrayal. He does not know how to shop for you. <laughs> Ser seriously, wow, I'm sorry. I, I never would have said anything if I had known that. But hey, you, you know what? Since since we're kind of talking now, um, and I got to tell you, I, I think you deserve a lot better than that. How do you stand it? I have my ways. <laughs> I think you should treat yourself a little better than that. You got a lot of life left ahead of you. You know, you don't want to spend the rest of it being miserable, do you? Lovely talking to you, Joe. I think I'll take the rest of my breakfast upstairs. <laughs> all right, fine. Avoid all my brilliant advice. All Burke women do. Hey. Hey, I heard you got out of soccer. Nobody gets out of Dolman's class. She made Shira Cohen play field hockey with a broken femur. You can see it poking out. Yeah, well, I fell into a loophole. There's a loophole? Let me have it. Dolman thinks I'm pregnant. Yeah, that probably wouldn't work for me. I just wanted to get out of soccer. She had me knocked up before I knew what was happening. Just to be clear, uh, you're not actually pregnant, right? Of course not. And in a couple of months, she's going to expect me to look like I've swallowed a basketball. Ugh, this is wrong. I hate soccer, but I've got to tell her the truth. Yeah. Yeah, tell her first thing tomorrow. That way they can announce your death at noon assembly. Or maybe we'll even get a half day out of it. OK, 7 o'clock. If history is any guide, my mom should be in the middle of her martini nap. 
Nope, she's uh, wide awake. Hey, uh, Mel, I gotta talk to you about something that you're not gonna really wanna hear, but um, today, uh, I got to know your mother a lot better. Ew, gross with my mother? How could you? <laughs> what? Ew, I do, I have a little more restraint than that, please. No, look, we got to talking, all right? We, we got to really talking. Ew, talking? That's even worse. Hey, we had a very revealing conversation that was quite therapeutic for her, I think. So look, this is, it's not gonna be easy for me to say. You may wanna sit down. This is bad, huh? Really bad? It is. Look, she told me that, um, your father's been cheating on her. That's it? <laughs> oh, it's so cute how you think that's news. You know, you look like a sweet little pixie, but you're very dark, Burke. <laughs> Mel, dear, you're home. I have to tell you something, something very important. Oh, I wonder what it could be. I mean, it might be shocking. I should brace myself. Tomorrow is our wedding anniversary, and Russell has used this occasion to cheat on me. <gasps> what? And as a result, I have decided to divorce your father. What? I wish I had never laid eyes on that man. Nothing good has ever come from this marriage. Mom, hello. You're right, I'm sorry, dear. I did get to meet Nancy Reagan. Anyway, I now see things so clearly, thanks to the support and encouragement of my good friend, Joe. Joe? Really? So, one conversation with Joe Longo and my parents' entire marriage blows up? Nice work, very therapeutic. I just told her that she deserved better. Yeah, but she really doesn't. He cheats on her. She cheats on him. That didn't come up. Yeah, it's their thing. Now they're meant for each other. They have this all worked out. All worked out? Burke, it's been years of misery and denial. Name me one good thing that's come out of this marriage. Me? Why does everyone keep leaving me out? Look, all I'm saying is your father is on vacation with a woman half his age on their anniversary. I think her showing up here is a cry for help. No, when my mother cries for help, it sounds like, Esperanza, donde esta el valium? You know what I think? I think this is a blessing in disguise, because she's finally talking about something for real. You need to be there for her. You have no idea of the dark forces you have just unleashed, okay? First come the hives, then come the locusts. I think you're overreacting just a little bit. Oh, but we'll see who's overreacting tomorrow when the sun turns to blood and it begins raining frogs. <laughs> I'm gonna clear up by the weekend because I have a softball game. Oh. Hey, coach, um, can I talk to you? Sure, Scanlon, anytime. Everything okay with you too? Well, actually, no. You know, I, I was thinking about yesterday and getting out of soccer, and I need to be totally honest with you. This whole baby thing, I, I feel so ashamed. Oh, honey. Don't wallow in regret and self-recrimination. Should you have been more careful? Yes, but you're not the only one who's made a mistake. Three out of 10 girls in this country get pregnant before they turn 20. That's 2,000 girls every day just like you. Well, um, not just like me. See, Coach, I need to tell you, I feel really bad. Oh, Lennox, it can happen to anyone. In fact, when I was in high school, it happened to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> when I went through it, there was no one to turn to. But I will be here for you every day. Awesome. <laughs> and don't worry. Your little situation will be our little secret. Heads up! Hey, what's where you're throwing that? For crying out loud, this girl is pregnant! <laughs> What are you doing? Redecorating. You know how it always lifts my spirits. I got rid of your tired old drapes. Oh, you mean my tired old brand new drapes that make me so happy whenever I walk into my house? <laughs> oh, honey, you can't expect me to live with those day after day, week after week. Whoa, week after what? So you're staying? I can't go back to that Georgetown house. I need to heal in the bosom of my family. And you're all that's left, so I have to make do. <laughs> The end of the world, Joe. She's moving in and staying forever. You don't know that for sure. Yes, I do. She's in there right now, taking down my drapes, and my poor pillows are next. She's redecorating what I just redecorated. She's re redecorating, and I re resent it. That doesn't mean she's going to stay here forever, Burke. She's just trying to keep herself busy. She, you know, she wants to be part of the family. Oh, well, that's a change. Back when I was a kid, she couldn't wait to get rid of her family. You know, she practically pushed me and Meredith out of the house. Wait a minute. You're the one that said you and your sister were like horrible teenagers. 
Well, we were. You know, the third time I was arrested, my mother made my father get a vasectomy so this inconvenient child thing would never happen again. Those are tender memories, huh? Piece by piece, she will destroy my house. Burke, relax, okay? Pillows, drapes, you know, they're just things. Rise above. What the? Hey, who the heck scratched my brand new Capilot skillet? Oh, I think Monica was heating up some stuff for her mud mask in that. What the hell'd she start with? A backhoe? Look at this thing, it's ruined. My God, it's like she strikes at what you love. Rise above, Joe. It's just a thing. This woman's gotta go, Burke. <laughs>
What are you saying, huh? Safe to take the skillet out of the box or what? Coach? Scanlon. Do you have a minute? Great news. Turns out the whole pregnancy thing was a false alarm. I can play soccer now. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> really? You're not? Not at all. Turns out I just can't count to 28. <laughs> well, after I poured my heart out to you. But I guess you must be relieved. I am. And I am so glad I had someone like you who took the time to support me and make me feel less alone. I owe you one. You know, that's good to hear because I signed you up to speak to a group of at-risk girls tomorrow. Being a sexually active teen who's had a close call, you might be able to get through to them. <laughs> Didn't you hear him? Not pregnant. At all. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still careless. You just got lucky. No, I'm not lucky. I lied to get out of soccer. Well, Scanlon, I, I have to say I feel disappointed and betrayed. But moving on, your name's already in the program and they're expecting you, plus the posters are already up. <laughs> oh, that's my old yearbook photo with my zombie eyes. Oh, what have I done? That's the look we want. Remember it for the speech. Happy anniversary, my darling. All my love, Russell. Oh, a diamond bracelet. <gasps> Daddy went with the big bling. Wow, it's like a five-figure apology right there, huh? It's like a pro basketball player apology. He's flying in tomorrow to whisk me off to Paris. Suck it, yoga girl. Oh, my goodness, I have to go back. <laughs> I got to admit, Burke, I think for once you were, you were right. I mean, uh, the dysfunction really seems to suit Monica and Russell. You know, I shouldn't have tried to stick my nose in there and fix what actually was broken very nicely. Well, oddly, in this instance, you were also right. I'm always happy to hear about that. Go on. Well, I used the power of real conversation. You know that thing you're so fond of? I called Russell's girlfriend and told her that Russell can't give her a baby, for real. Because of that vasectomy he neglected to mention. So she kicked him to the curb when you spilled the beans about Russell's... beans. Yeah, so if you want to say good job, Mel, go ahead. Pretty good, Burke. I tell you, you could uh, almost be a Longo. Yeah, and if you just shut up once in a while, you could be a Burke. <laughs> I could never be a Burke. My liver couldn't take it. Well, Mom, when you get to Paris, send us some croissants. You don't like croissants? Yes, I do. No, you don't. I think I know what I like. You like eclairs. Go away. Send us a box of eclairs. Yes, dear. I'm so glad you worked things out with Daddy. You only get one real soulmate in life, and when you find him, you hold on to him. And he's closer than you think. Ta-ta. <laughs> What the hell is she talking about? Oh, who knows? She had a big breakfast. Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. So, how do I look? <gasps> oh, just like me. I'm gonna go change. No, 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 no. I just mean you look appropriate for an intern at City Hall. Just wait till your boss sees you. <laughs> you don't have to wait. I'm your boss. I see you. Yo. Hey, check it out. A pair of Mel Burks. Which is the scariest hand in poker. <laughs> Look at you all dressed up in your little intern costume, huh? Yep, she's gonna shadow me for the next three weeks. Learn what I do, watch my every move. Well, make sure you teach her how to do this one. <laughs> I got that one down, too. Wait. Oh, nice. Not even close. Amateurs. <laughs> Remember, when we get to the office, no special treatment and no pet names, okay? I'm Miss Scanlon, not Honey, Pumpkin, or Sugar Booger. All right, honey, but you know, if a cake shows up that says, best intern ever, I had nothing to do with it. ML. Ah, honey, I'm kidding. <laughs> Cancel the cake. So I'm ready. There you go, buddy. There's your lunch. <laughs> Turkey sandwich, carrots, a... and a damp sponge. What? I'm sorry about that. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Here you go, bud. You know, uh, if given the choice, I'd prefer the sandwich. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Nobody didn't try to clean my shower with your sandwich. Um, Joe, are you even awake yet? I mean, I'm a little worried about you driving Ryder to school in your condition. Relax, I know that route like the back of my hand. I could drive with my eyes closed if I had to. In fact, I have. <laughs> I was by myself. All right, let's go, sugar booger. I mean, Miss Sugar Booger. Lennox gets to skip school? I want an internship. Fine, you can be my intern. 
Tell your own butt to get in the car. This internship sucks. Try doing the actual job, dude. Let's go. It's all good. everybody this is Lennox Scanlon and even though she is my niece I don't want anybody giving this pretty lady special treatment but yesterday you said to no no zip it Wyatt oh so don't do this all no <laughs> intruder alert councilwoman Mueller is waiting in your office oh Mueller is she like your BFF <laughs> yeah big fish face <laughs> I clean that up just for you. Yeah, that woman is against everything I stand for. You know, she tried to stop wine sales on Sundays. She knows that's my favorite drinking day. And now she's plotting to kill the Toledo street scene. But that music festival has been around forever. Yeah, since I was a kid. Exactly, forever. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let that go because it's your first day. Betty. Burke. Such a pleasure. Is it? I wasn't so sure after our last meeting. I recall you referred to me as turkey jowls. With all due respect, I was told my microphone was off. And I believe it was in that same meeting that you called me the esteemed council pimp. I did say esteemed. Thank you for that. Uh, this is my intern, Lennox Scanlon. Nice to meet you. Well, uh, this is my intern, Calvin something. It's Cameron. You want college credit or not? All right, let's get down to this Toledo street scene business. Your hippie hootenanny is a menace. Pardon me, the street scene is a joyous celebration that brings the whole community together. You know what else it brings? STDs. <laughs> Sewage, trash, and debris. And actual STDs. <laughs> Neighborhood businesses are up in arms about the negative impact. Since when is spending money a negative impact? I have the numbers here direct from the Chamber of Commerce. Miss Scanlon, would you make copies of these for my venerable colleague? Got it, Miss Burke. I have evidence, too. Letters from local businesses demanding we shut it down. Carlton. Cameron. Whatever. <laughs> copies. I don't think my councilwoman likes your councilwoman very much. I know. That was like a cage match with pantyhose. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mueller doesn't wear pantyhose. How do you know that? I blocked it out. So, uh, how long have you been in the intern game? Oh, wow. I go back, like, 20 minutes. A newbie. Um, I've been doing this forever. Uh, three whole days. Oh, so you can give me the 411. Sure. Uh, first, I think you have to put your document face down. Uh, but only if you want the words to show up. So you mean, uh, bringing back blank pieces of paper would make me look bad? I don't think anything would make you look bad. As usual, you failed to grasp the complexity of this issue. I think all that peroxide you put on your hair must have seeped through to your brain. Hey, this used to be natural. Listen, Twinkie, when you've been on the city council as long as I have, you'll learn there's a lot more to politics than pandering to the stoners and the booze hounds. And in all that time, no one ever taught you how to use mouthwash? <laughs> I'll call you. Well, not if I call you first. Stop talking to her! Stop talking to him! <laughs> Clarence, let's go! What are you two doing? Well, I was just being nice. This is government. We don't do that here. <laughs> oh. oh! Catching up on some sleep? Uh, no, no, no. I was just I was just sitting here recharging my eyeballs. <laughs> In a puddle of drool? What? Oh, hey, hey, yeah. All right, look, uh, I may as well tell you, since I still can't seem to get a real executive job here in this country, I actually, I actually found a job overseas. You did? I did. Look, it's just part-time. It's, um, it's actually an online consulting gig with this uh, Russian finance company. And when were you gonna tell me about this moonlighting you're doing? Well, if you hadn't walked in on me sleeping, probably, uh, never. <laughs> And how long has this been going on? Just a few weeks, all right? It's just a couple hours a day from 1 to 3. Oh, well, that's not so bad. I mean, the kids are still in school then. Yeah, it's 1 to 3 a.m. because that's uh, business hours in Russia. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not going to interfere with my job responsibilities here at the house. The uh, house you're about to burn down? The what? The... 
Oh my, shoot. Oh. Whoops, hold on. Hope you're in the mood for uh, blackened lasagna. <laughs> hey, you know, if there's a fire, just drool on it. Hey, ML. Hey, Ryder, nice hickey. Oh, God, is it, is it that noticeable? No. <laughs> Only from space. <laughs> Okay, help me. How do I get rid of it? Oh, nothing works. From what I hear. But if you want to try covering it up, I have some makeup. Makeup is for girls. No way. Damn. Monster hickey. <laughs> Give me the makeup. Top drawer in my bathroom vanity. So, uh, what you working on? Oh, my position paper for the street scene. Oh. Hey, look, I want to apologize if I was a little curt with you today at work. You know, it's just, I don't want you getting too cozy with the enemy. Cameron's not the enemy. Cameron works for Mueller, and Mueller plays dirty. But I like Cameron. Mm, maybe you don't. Mm, maybe you do. Maybe I don't want you talking to him anymore. I'll get it. Hey, Lennox. Uh, Councilwoman Burke. Maybe. Don't wait up for me. Hey! Did you see that? Promise me you'll never do that. I don't even know what we're talking about. Good. Boys are so much simpler. Yeah. Hey, which one of these matches my skin tone better, bisque or ivory? Neither. Anyone can see you're a buff peach. <laughs> Good morning. Evening. Whatever. It was 1 a.m. You can't sleep? Not a wink. Oh, good news is I'm all caught up on storage wars. Oh, good. Wow, business on the top, party on the bottom. It's like the mullet of clothing. I only consult from the waist up. I got a meeting with Russia in a few minutes. Oh, well, you better get on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm going to regret this later, but, um... This thing that's keeping you up, you want to... You want to talk about it? I'm regretting it already. Cameron thing, you know? I, this internship was supposed to bring me and Lennox closer together. What's the big deal? The kid had her home before a curfew. Well, she shouldn't be going out with him at all. This is politics, Joe. What if Cameron is just using Lennox to get inside information? Like what? The Toledo launch codes? <laughs> no, I don't think this has anything to do with politics at all. I think it has to do with, you know, you trying to dress Lennox up like a mini melon. She's not you. Yes, she is. Well, I mean, she could be. As I expected. You know, this whole internship was about turning Lennox into you. Why do you think people have kids, Joe? You know, so that you have a newer, fresher version of yourself. That way, when you die, you didn't really. Wow. Okay, well, putting aside that very rational immortality argument, I don't see the problem if Cameron goes out with Lennox. I mean, he's a boy, she's a girl. Trust me, the last thing that's gonna be on either of their minds is politics. You know, when I was an intern for my dad, he would always want to talk about the bills he was working on, but the only bill I was interested in was Bill Hammond. Or <laughs> Billy Ginsburg. <gasps> and Tattoo Bill down at the yogurt shop. Once again, wow. You know what? Maybe you're right, Joe. I don't know why I was so worried. It turns out that, you know, Lennox is just making out with some guy she just met. Oh, great. Now I'm upset. So I will send you a, a revised uh, five-year performer with the adjustments that we discussed. And uh, then we can decide if the cash flow estimates are within range. Thank you, Mr. Longo. We're looking forward to reviewing it. Do svidaniya. Do svidaniya. Please, Mr. Longo, remain on the line for a moment so we can discuss the agenda for next meeting. Of course, Mr. Romanov. The coast is clear, Joseph. Let me just set the mood. Say, um, voila in Russian. Voila. May I pour you a um, glass of champagne? Yes, and I will pour one for you. Why, thank you. I'd like to uh, propose a toast to you. Zavas. Oh, by the way, um, I got the package that you sent for me. Did you open it yet? No, I wanted to wait for you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I love Russian poetry, I'll bet. I also got the package you sent to me. In fact, 
I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> wow. I really do know how to shout for me. I mean, um, you. Do you have a minute? Of course, Miss Scanlon. Actually, I'm here as Lennox. You know, sugar booger. <laughs> I'm sorry about last night. I shouldn't have just run off. It wasn't right. Uh, you know, I was your age once, honey. I've had my head turned by many cute bills. Uh, boys. <laughs> so, we're okay? Yeah, we're okay. Great, because I've been giving the street scene a lot of thought, and I had a couple ideas, so I just kind of integrated them into your position paper. Ow. Uh, <laughs> so, a lot of changes. <laughs> yeah, not that many. Um, donation to defray sanitation costs, possible change of venue, a few compromised notions. <laughs> these, uh, these aren't compromising, these are mulery. Has Kevin been feeding you his boss's ideas? You two were supposed to be making out. <laughs> oh, what? I can't have a thought in my head unless someone else puts it there? No, you can have a thought in your head, just not these thoughts. You're supposed to be a mini me, not a mini Mueller. I'm not a mini anybody. I'm a regular sized Lennox, and these are all my ideas. Oh. Did Cameron tell you to say that? Oh, here's another thought that I just had, all of my own. I'm through with this lousy internship. I quit. What? But Lennox! And you know what? I'm not wearing this stupid blazer anymore. Okay, I'll see you at home, honey. <laughs> she really loves me. What's up, Joe? Hey, buddy. Wow. It's not a makeup on that hickey, man. <laughs> you know, when I was your age, which is not that long ago, that was like a badge of honor. Don't you want to show that off to all your friends? Show them what Holly did to you? The thing is, um, it's not from Holly. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, if Holly finds out, you better get in the boyfriend protection program, brother. <laughs> so who's the, um, lovely little lady who, uh, <laughs> wouldn't let go? I don't want to talk about it. Understood. All right. Why don't you, uh, wear a turtleneck, you know? Or, um, get a bodyguard. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Ugh. <laughs> Would someone please pass the salt? Why, does Mueller like it salty? <laughs> I think I know how I like my food and where I like to eat it, and that's not with you, so I'm going to take my dinner to go. I'm taking my food to go first. <laughs> so after the whole financial scandal, uh, everyone treated me like an outcast, and I couldn't get a job anywhere. So then I met Mel, and she took me in here and gave me this job, and I've been here ever since. So you see, Elena, I'm not currently exactly the high-powered executive that you thought I was. So look, if you want to hang up right now, I would totally understand. What? No, no, no. I'm, I'm moved that you share this truthfulness with me, Joseph. I wish I could share more. You know what I wish? That I was lying right beside you. Damn, lady, you are killing me right now. That is American idiomatic expression? Yeah. Yeah, it means... Why do you have to be so incredibly beautiful and so far away? Joe, can I talk to you? Speaking of killing me right now, that's Mel. Let me call you right back, okay? Hey, sorry, I saw your light on under the door. And to you, that's the universal sign to please barge right in? What's with all the candles and the champagne? Are you about to get lucky with yourself? Yeah, you know, but if I rush right into it, I feel cheap. Plus, if I buy myself dinner, I'm a lot more fun. So what'd you do, just come up here to annoy the crap out of me, or did you actually need something? Oh, I really messed things up with Lennox. But I wasn't wrong. Seeing Cameron has totally corrupted her. Well, you cannot always try to control things, all right? I mean, you can't tell someone that they can't fall in love with somebody that they work with. Love? Whatever it is. Look, the point is, you know, that, I mean, if you're lucky enough in this life to, to make a connection with somebody, don't you owe it to yourself to see if it's for real? As hard as this may be for you to believe, you know, you can fall for someone on the other side of a political issue or on the other side of the world, for that matter. You know, I thought this whole internship thing would lead to some major aunt-niece bonding. Like, we were gonna dish about legislation and switch outfits and see if anyone notices. But now we're not even talking. She's totally rejected me. Oh, she hasn't rejected you. She's just disagreeing with you. Look, Lennox is 
smart and, and independent and fights for what she believes in. You want to know what that makes her? Big pain in the ass. Yeah, she is mini you. Oh my God, you're right. <gasps> she is a mini me. I will live forever. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I I totally misread her. I gotta go talk to Lennox right now. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's the middle of the night. Yeah, well, this has to be said. I will leave you to your menage a Joe. <laughs> Lennox, wake up. What's going on? Is there some sort of emergency? Yes, an us emergency. Okay, well, unless one of us is on fire, I'm still not talking to you. Good night. No, come on. Until I get this off my chest, I can't go back to sleep. <laughs> and I guess I can't either. Okay, look, I thought this whole thing was about you and Cameron and politics and loyalty, but it's not. You know, it's about me letting you be who you are, not who I want you to be. Please come back to work with me. What if I don't agree with you? You know, what if the thoughts that come out of my brain disagree with the thoughts that come out of your brain? That'd be fantastic. You know, as long as it doesn't happen too often or publicly. Remember, me boss, you intern. Fair enough. Now, about Cameron. I hereby give you permission to see him. You don't have to do that. No, I do. I was wrong. And it doesn't happen often, but when it does, I am big enough to acknowledge it. That's great, but uh, I don't want to see him anymore. What? But I was just so big right then. What, what happened? I don't need a reason. He's just, eh. Ugh, been there. Eh is the worst. Oh, it's so true. You really are my mini me. Oh, off me. Oh, it's like hugging myself. Ow, you're on my hair. Oh, I hate that too. How was the uh, Toledo street scene? Busy serving me. Fried zucchini, fried jalapenos, fried pickles. Jeez, Mel. What? They're all vegetables. <laughs> yeah, deep fried and totally disgusting. Uh, you mean delicious. Uh, I think I know what I mean. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Even if it's wrong, dummy head. <laughs> you're wrong, stupid pants. Getting back to something important. When are you going to tell all of us, Ryder, who um, actually gave you that love bite? Yeah, who hiccupied you? Yeah, come on, spill it. It's fine. If I tell you, you have to promise not to make fun of me. Promise. Promise. Okay. It was Sunday afternoon, and I was sitting on the couch eating graham crackers. <laughs> He's bringing me some paperwork from the office. Hello, can I help you? Yes, I hope so. Uh, Joseph! Elena? Surprise! Elena! Elena! Hey, hey it's Elena! <laughs> Who the hell's Elena? So, do you two know each other, or is she just the best cold call salesman ever? Oh, Mel, uh, sorry, yes, this is, um, Elena Romanoff. Uh, she is one of my Russian colleagues. Oh, and you're just giving her the traditional Russian tongue greeting? <laughs> I could not bear the distance between us any longer. So I used my vacation time and came here to beautiful Toledo, America to surprise you. I am certainly surprised. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> you must be Mel. Yes, yeah, welcome. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I love to hug. I heard so much about you. Oh, yeah, me too. You, your name's Elena, you had some vacation time, and you love hugging. <laughs> oh, and Elena, this is uh, Lennox, and uh, that is the writer. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Elena, yep, that's, that's who, what are you doing? <laughs> What? I, I love to hug, too. Yes. <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. When the batter starts to bubble, you go under it like this and just flip it over. Uh. 
You're so good at flipping things over. Mm. <laughs> and pancakes are ruined forever. <laughs> now, you know how you complain for three days that there was no breakfast? Today, we're making it for you. <laughs> you just did that so well. I'm telling you, she's like a natural. Have you really only been here for three days? It just, it seems like so much more. <laughs> Not making go so fast when you're with Joseph. Well, what? <laughs> No, 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 no. What I, what, I, what I think she meant was that time has really flown by since she's been here. Oh, well, to me, time is kind of standing still and grossing me out. <laughs> so, what are you two doing today? <laughs> Besides that. Oh, um, well, actually, I think we're going to make it outside today. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show uh, Elena some of the sights. Oh, do we have to? Oh, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> My vacation will be over so soon. It's so sad. Oh, but maybe you could have vacation and come to Russia? Mel, when is Joe's vacation? Oh, well, it sure seems like he's taking some vacation right now, you know, because not a lot's getting done at the house lately. <laughs> you could come to see me, Joseph, and then I could come back here again, and back and forth and back and forth. Oh, my God, you do that so well. I personally don't care for it. Relax, will you? Everything's gonna get done around here, okay? And you were gonna love dinner tonight. Oh, are you cooking it, Joseph? What will it be? I'm gonna make my famous eggplant parmesan. What's with all the food things? Joe's famous eggplant parmesan. It's missing one ingredient. Joe. <laughs> well, what is he doing? Oh, never mind. I know who he's doing. Are we gonna starve? I'm not. I'm gonna have that slice of cake I've been saving. Oh, I'm thinking about this slice of cake all day long. My slice of cake is gone. Who ate it? Oh, don't look at us. We would never. Yeah. Oh, that's my cake. Please, excuse for the interruption. You coming back, baby? Coming, coming. This cake was delicious. Mm -hmm. I wish there was more. Oh, me too. <laughs> more cake, less you. It's all good, all good. It's OK, OK. It's all right, all right. As far as I can see, it's all good, all good. It's OK, OK. It's all right, all right. I guess you're with me. Joe, we need to talk. All right, but I only got a minute. I'm taking Elena out to see uh, Toledo's hot spots. You know, other than me. <clears throat> okay, well, I'll try not to take up too much of your time with some trivial matters like, oh, I don't know, forgetting the kids at school? So I was a little late picking them up. And in your boxer shorts, <laughs> I got several calls from moms. But there were no complaints, and you know it. <laughs> Joe, this goes beyond carpools. You're letting Elena encroach in my home, your job, my cake. I'll make you another cake. How will that help me eat cake yesterday? You're right, let me make it up to you. I'll make you another cake. Send it from Russia? I mean, you know, that's where it looks like you're going. I know what this is. I know what this is. When I was in college, I dated uh, Jane Hafey. Hot, hot Hafey. My roommate Wayne complained about her all the time, but that's because Wayne was single. See, and every time he saw, you know, me and Jane together, like in, uh, you know, the shower or whatever, <laughs> it reminded him of how single and lonely he was. Oh, so you think I'm your lonely roommate, Wayne? You smell a little better, but yeah. <laughs> Look, this has nothing to do with me being lonely and single, which, oh boy, I am not. This is about you and your guests taking advantage of my generosity. You know, in some cultures, people are actually friendly to their guests. Uh, excuse me, I am the friendliest person I know. I, I, I have always been friendly. In fourth grade, I was the class greeter for career day. And I didn't volunteer. I was picked. <laughs> you are not gonna believe what Joe said this whole Elena problem is about. He says it's because I'm not getting any friendly. <laughs> hey, it's nothing I've wanted to hear. Elena's gonna be gone in a couple of days. Why are you letting it bother you so much? Well, the real reason, which Joe would not be able to hear, is that, you know, in whirlwind affairs like this, people get hurt. People like you? No. Big no. This is about Joe. Look, I've had my share of foreign affairs, OK? After college, I had a three-month Eurorail pass. And let's just say my visa got punched at a few different stops. <laughs> Ugh. I'm just saying, things like this burn hot and heavy, but then they flame out. And all you're left with is, you know, warm, shameful memories. <laughs> Did you not hear me? Ugh. Anyway, if Joe thinks this is anything more than a fling, he's kidding himself. 
Or Joe could go visit her in Russia and the relationship could have a future. You said it yourself. I was eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah, I said it, but I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening at all. In fact, the only thing I do see around here is dirty dishes in the sink, dust bunnies on the floor, and a table full of junk food. Wait, is this Joe's idea of a good lunch now? No, it's my idea of a lunch. In fact, it's every meal from now on. Breakfast burritos, gummy worms, chocolate wing wings. I'm eating it all in the name of journalism. Oh, does journalism like a little junk in the trunk? <laughs> no, the school vending machine is trying to kill us all. You know my friend Maisie Goodman? Big girl. She has two jelly donuts for lunch every day. Then she sugar crashes and falls asleep in math. Well, the world needs to know what the school is doing to us kids. So I'm going to eat nothing but vending machine food and chronicle what happens to me. Wow, I think you're really gonna inspire some people to make healthier choices. Oh, malted milk balls. I'll chronicle these. Terrible, it's just terrible. Oh, awesome, is this for your blog? Keep your hands off my crap. I'm the one who has to eat all of this. I'm saving my friend and a generation of America's youth, so back off. Oh, pink ball of death. Why don't I do all the eating for you? I'll choke down all this trans fatty goodness and you could do all the writing. My guts, your glory. Fine, but you can only eat food from the vending machine. Hey, man, no one's arguing. Did I just see you put Pop Rocks in that burrito? Yeah, it's an explosion of Mexican flavor. Uh, like a little hat dance in your mouth? Mm, see. Si. Uh-oh. Ryder? You know, um, maybe some things weren't meant to be mixed together. I'll be all right. Oh, the lovebirds are here. Joseph took me for the first time on Ferris wheel. We were up so, so high. The view was incredible. It always is when I'm with you. Aww. <laughs> what a wonderful day. And now I must go upstairs because I have pooped. <laughs> I hope you mean you are pooped. Ah, uh, yes, that. Thank you for a wonderful day, Joseph. Uh, you are more than welcome. Mm -hmm. Need anything else before I have to go? What? You are leaving? Yeah, you remember I told you that that friend of mine from business school is throwing that big poker event tonight, and he invited all of his broker buddies, and it's gonna be a great chance for me to do some networking, and, you know, unfortunately, I just can't afford to miss it. Can't we go together? Elena, um, if I show up with you, no one's gonna be talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, besides, I think this will be a great opportunity, you know, for, um, you and Mel to get to know each other. You know, the two ladies in my life hanging out, you know? And, um... This will be an opportunity for you to show uh, Elena how friendly you are. <laughs> That's so not necessary. Yeah, come on, it'll be great, you know? You two have so much in common. I mean, you're both high-powered career women. <laughs> and there's this. <laughs> there we go. I promise I will not be out too late, okay? Good night. Night, Burke. So, <sighs> you like women, no? What, what, why would you think that? These shoes just happen to be comfortable. How is it you can live with Joseph and not want to jump up and down on his bones all the time? I often want to jump up and down on his bones, but only when I'm wearing big, heavy boots. <laughs> you make joke. Ugh, I wish I make joke. <laughs> and after university, it took many years to rise up to corporate ranks at Pratko. It is very hard to be a businesswoman in such a sexist country. Do you know how you say female executive in Russian? You don't. <laughs> but you didn't let that stop you, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, and yet you didn't. <laughs> Let's drink to you. I am a determined person. When I want to do something, I do it. And when I want to do someone, I do it. <laughs> Not that old yet. <sighs> oh. You know, I am truly impressed. You are self-assured and tough and, and, and accomplished. I mean, you're like a Russian me. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know if I would be so cool about letting Joe go out with the guys tonight. <laughs> so, what this big deal? 
Oh, well, you know, if I travel 5,000 miles to visit a guy and he left me for a special poker night, I'd be pretty upset. You'd be crying, weepy girl? <laughs> Excuse me, no, I'd be putting on my bone stomping boots and he'd be crying, weepy boy. So, Joe going out for a boy's night is a bad thing? Well, it's not bad. It's just, you know, selfish and immature and <sighs> male. <laughs> Don't listen to me, I'm drunk, you know, so. Uh, Hey, Nazdrovia. <laughs> hey, I swear, the more vodka I have, the better I pronounce that. Hey, good evening, ladies. Как ты мог со мной так поступить? Hey, Joe. What's going on? Вы эгоистичный американский человек. Идиот. Амбал. Oh, I think she's saying I missed my big American lover. <laughs> How could you do such things to me, Joseph? You leave me alone and go play poking with your boyfriends. Okay, first of all, it's, uh, it's poker. <laughs> and they're not my boyfriends. Those guys were brokers. And I didn't leave you here alone. I left you with Mel. Yes, and good thing. She got my eyes open. Really? No, I mean, I think they were pretty open when you got here. You know, like, whoa. <laughs> you are a selfish, thoughtless, male man. <laughs> Elena. Oh, I'm so tired. Wait a minute. What the hell did you say to her? Who, her? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing? She liked me when I left here. You broke her. Hey, guys, yo, you do rock. Elena, come on. Just open up the door, all right? Can't we just talk about it? Yes, to you. How's it going? You Like that? Okay, look, I've been on the other side of a door or two. Tell her prostitia. It means I'm sorry. What? Well, we hung out. I picked up a few phrases. Prostitia. <laughs> Elena. Prostitia. Yeah, that worked great. We just got started. Look, Elena may be from half a world away, but we all understand the same language. Apology. Um, tell her it hurts me when I see you cry. Isn't that a little over the top? Trust me, and don't roll your eyes when you say it. We can hear that. Fine. It hurts me when I see you cry. Really? You're special. It's not every day you find someone you connect with, and I connect with you. You're so special, Elena. I mean, it's not every day that you find someone you connect with, and I, I really connect with you. I, I didn't realize until just now how much I care about you. And I didn't realize till now how much I care about you. And, and, and I'm gonna miss you when you're in Russia, Joe. What? I mean, you tell her you're gonna miss her when she's gone, Joe. Elena, we don't have a lot of time left, sweetie. Please don't make us spend it with this door between us. Now you go in. Thank you, Burke. I can handle it from here. What are you eating? Chocolate wing wing. Show me the wrapper. Okay, it's a carrot. We had a deal. How could you? I, I've eaten nothing but vending machine food for two days. Now, now I'm bloated and tired, and everything coming out of me is as unnatural as what's going in. I've only posted one blog article so far. The Maisie Goodmans of the world are counting on us to come to their rescue. I think I'm going to yak up a gummy squirrel. <laughs> Never mind, it ran back down. You're doing important work here, and your bravery inspires us all. Now, man up and eat your breakfast. Can I at least put some milk in it? I think you know the answer to that. Hey, Mel. Hey, Joe. How did everything work out with Elena last night? Oh, she was steaming. So was the makeup sex. Mm, you know, a simple thumbs up, thumbs down would do. Look, I'm sorry if I stirred things up. 
Maybe you and Elena do have a future together. You know, maybe nothing terrible will happen. Joseph, something terrible has happened. I just got off the phone with my boss in Russia. There is enormous scandal at Protko. What happened? In Russia, we call it Ponzi scheme. <laughs> the government has shut down the company and arrested all the executives. But I've done nothing wrong. Well, I'm sure you didn't, sweet. When I return to St. Petersburg, I'm sure to be arrested. Oh, Joseph, I'm so scared. What am I going to do? Look, look, we're gonna we're gonna figure something out, okay? Right, Mel? You betcha. Yeah, we won't let you down. <laughs> so we spent all day trying to find Elena some legal counsel, and we got nothing. Well, it looks like you got something. Oh, yeah, she, she had never seen an outlet mall before. See that? Retail therapy crosses all cultures. <laughs> I'm going to go put on my fancy new bras and weep. Thank you for trying so hard to help me, Joseph. Damn. You know, Elena's gonna get arrested as soon as she returns to Russia. And then who knows what could happen to her. Hey, you're a government thing. Can't you help her? Yeah, I could get her a parade permit. <laughs> Look, Joe, Elena is a tough, intelligent woman. She'll be able to find her way out of this jam. I don't know, they got some pretty tough jams in her country. I just wish there was some way for her to stay here in the U.S. until it was safe for her to return. Well, there are the obvious ways. Um, she could fake her own death, she could get plastic surgery, or, you know, she could marry my Uncle Jimmy, and maybe then he'd stop asking me. That's it. Yeah, not, not, not your creepy Uncle Jimmy thing, but the whole marriage thing. Wait a minute, if she married a U.S. citizen, I could save her from being extradited. Elena! Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up the white steed, Sir Longalot. Green card marriages are illegal. You could both get in serious trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're completely right. I was just grasping at straws, you know, because I just don't want her life to be ruined by this financial scandal like mine was. Well, look, you're upset because she's your friend, but that's the best thing you can do right now is just be her friend. Oh, but if she does want that plastic surgery option, tell her not to go to my mom's guy because her belly button is up to here. <laughs> This food looks fantastic. Yeah, well, this is Elena's farewell dinner, so I wanted to make it special. I uh, prepared all of the Russian classics. I see. Pork and beef pelmeni, borscht, potato vareniki. That's right. For dessert, my uh, homemade cannoli. Cannoli? That's not a Russian dessert. Yeah, but nothing's better than my cannoli. <laughs> Dig in, everybody, before the uh, pelmeni gets cold and the borscht gets warm. <laughs> oh, my God, vegetables. I want to make out with this broccoli. Hey, what about Lennox's junk food research? I'm done. I've eaten my last trans fat gut bomb. My blog post spread like head lice in a kindergarten. <laughs> Parents went nuts. So the school got rid of all the junk food, and um, they're stocking the vending machines with only healthy stuff. Well done, Lennox. You know, uh, before we begin, I'd just like to say something to our guest of honor. Uh, Elena, I'm gonna miss you so much. <laughs> I'll miss the way that you hug me in the mornings. <laughs> Hug me very, very tightly. Such a sweet boy. How do we talked about this, buddy? Uh, I'd like to make a toast. Elena, even though some tough times lie ahead, I know you will overcome all of them. You know, I think you are an exceptionally strong and inspirational woman, because it takes one to know one. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. I would also like to make some toast. <laughs> you have all opened your home and your hearts to me. I will have many tropical Toledo memories to keep me warm on those cold Siberian nights. <laughs> I make joke. Nobody gets sent to Siberia anymore. <laughs> we go to forced labor camp and try not to catch tuberculosis while waiting trial. <laughs> Nazarovia. Naz Nazarovia. You know what? I gotta say something now. Elena? I know we haven't known each other for very long, but in the short amount of time that we have, I have really grown to respect you and admire you and truly care about you. And there is no way I'm gonna let you go back to Russia and be punished for something you had nothing to do with. So, Elena Romanoff, will you marry me and become a U.S. citizen? What? What? You are serious? You would do this for me? You bet I would. So what do you say? I say... 
fucking die. This was the happiest moment of my life. Holy cannoli. Look at that, Ryder. Not a molecule of polysorbate 60 in sight. You know, sometimes if people can't make good choices for themselves, someone else has to make good choices for them. Are you Lennox Scanlon? Yeah. You wrote that blog story all about the junk food. Yes, it was just something I had to do. It's her. She's the one that made the school put all the healthy stuff in the vending machines. <laughs> Let's get her! Yo, I got sugary processed crap here, three bucks a pop. Previously on Melissa and Joey. Something terrible has happened. There is enormous scandal at Protko. She married a U.S. citizen. I could save her from being extradited. Will you marry me and become a U.S. citizen? Da. This was the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> Holy cannoli. Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. I must call my parents and tell them of your proposal and that we are to be green card married. I'm sure they've been waiting years to get that phone call. Oh, they're going to be so proud. <laughs> Tell them that their uh, fake son-in-law says, hey. <laughs> hey, Joe, listen, I hate to get all rational on you. Yeah, must be why you never do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, this marrying a total stranger from a different hemisphere, um, was that a stupid idea or an incredibly stupid idea? It's totally spontaneous. I mean, you know, I saw a woman in distress and, uh, you know, bam, just leapt into action. Oh, like a superhero? Those are your words. <laughs> but they're accurate. <laughs> So, your thought process was basically, bam. No, when a fireman rescues a lady from a burning building, they don't stop to ask questions. Yeah, but firemen aren't usually boinking people on the way down the ladder. Why is this bothering you so much? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because one of us doesn't have a career that's yet ruined. You know, you work for me. I, I don't want to be involved in some potential scandal. There's no scandal, all right? I'm just helping somebody out. Someone who's, you know, kind and sweet and, and hot and, and, and honest and vulnerable and... Extremely hot. Hey, which brain is making the decision here, Joe? The upper brain or the lower brain? Before you judge, would you just think about it, please? Okay, fine. For you, I'll think about it. Bam! <laughs> Still hate it. It's all good. All good. It's okay. Work. We heat this thing up and it turns into food. You uh, want me to heat up my cell phone and call for pizza? <laughs> oh, thank goodness you're home. What is this? Chicken or beef? That's the ice pack I've been using for my groin injury. <laughs> Ew. Uh... What? Here. Turkey casserole, all right? Protein, vegetables, everything you need. Plus, goes great with ice pack. So, uh, how'd it go at City Hall? Did you get the marriage license? No, I gotta go back in the morning. I gotta bring in my friggin' birth certificate. You would not realize how many pieces of paperwork you have to throw at these people when your ride the bee's only been in the country for like 10 days. It's like they think I'm trying to pull a fast one on them or something. You are. Yeah, maybe, but I'm doing the right thing, all right? And I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Am I the only one that thinks this sham wedding is nuts? Do you really want my opinion or do you want me to just nod along? Just nod along. I mean, okay, for starters, you know, it's illegal. And how is this even gonna work? What, is Elena gonna get an apartment? How long do they have to stay married? Are they gonna have pretend kids? Well, if they do, they better get on a waiting list for pretend preschool. <laughs> Come on, give Joe a break. What he's doing is really great. What? This is why I told you to nod along. What is so great about it? Name one single thing. He's saving an innocent person from arrest, deportation, and jail. He's risking himself to help another person. He's like... Gandhi. The only thing Joe and Gandhi have in common is they both like to go around shirtless. When the law is wrong, you can either stand aside and do nothing, or you can jump on board and fight injustice. Okay, why can't you just go to the mall and buy some slutty tops like a regular teenager? Totes, can I have like $80? Ashley and I are so getting our ears pierced some more. Happy? Not so much. 
hey, ML, found this great website. Make your green card marriage look real. Uh, I don't want to hear this. I am not involved in this illegal activity in any way. Got it. Hey, uh, which invitation do you like better? The one with the wedding bells or the one with the birds? Didn't you hear me? I refuse to be drawn into this international felony. Birds, always go with the birds. <laughs> How is pulling sweater over eyes of Uncle Sam going, my favorite boy? I'm, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot what I was going to say. Invitations. Oh, right. Yeah, well, I printed up a few that I thought you might like. These are beautiful. You've done so much for me. <laughs> yeah, well, we still need to get wedding photos. There's, there's a lot to do if you really want to pull this off. How can I ever thank you? Don't go down that road. <laughs> Agent Miles Purvis, immigration. <gasps> it's the feds. Uh, just to sack them all naked. <laughs> this is just great. Where is Joe? I'm not ready. I wouldn't know what to say. Hide up in my bedroom. Let's go. <laughs> what are you going to tell him? You can't tell him the truth. He's a federal agent. I can't lie to him. OK, let me talk to him. I'm 16. I can lie all day. <laughs> you just smile and look pretty. That I can do. <laughs> Hello. Are you Mel Burke? Yes, I am. I'm Mel Burke. Please come in. I'm here about a marriage license applied for by a Joseph P. Longo. Since the woman he is marrying is on a tourist visa from Russia, it raised a few red flags. I totally understand. Won't you have a seat? We don't do that. I can tell you firsthand how incredibly in love Joe and Elena are. It's not just Ms. Romanov's visa status that's raising suspicions. It's also Mr. Longo's checkered past, his pattern of behavior. I wouldn't put anything past Mr. Longo. We all know what he's done. What are you talking about? His involvement in the Ponzi scheme. He has a history of fraud. Uh, OK. Um, well, he was completely innocent of that. He was a victim, and he lost everything, too. You know, you don't know Joe Longo at all. If you're such an expert on the man, tell me how you know their relationship is legitimate. I don't have to prove anything to you. Actually, you do, because if he's trying to defraud the government, there will be serious consequences. OK. Well, uh, let me tell you something, Buster. First of all, if you want to touch my pictures and my candy dishes, get a warrant. And second, you know, Joe and Elena's love is as legitimate as, as these wedding invitations. Mr. and Mrs., your name here requests the honor of your presence. This is a first draft, but look at those birds. I mean, if that's not a symbol of true love, I don't know what is. Yeah, is that all you got? No, there's tons of other stuff, like... Like a killer wedding dress. Anyone can buy a dress that proves nothing. OK, look, you know I'm a city councilwoman. If this wasn't a real relationship, would I be officiating the wedding? You're going to what? Every time I hear it, it's like the first time. Really? You'll be performing the ceremony? Yeah, stick that in your report, secret agent man. I'm marrying Joe Longo. <laughs> Hey, he's gone. It's safe. I overheard what you said. You will perform the wedding? This is truth? Yeah, I heard me say it too. Oh. You are the best BFF friend a woman has ever had. Now we have to find the real wedding dress so it will not look like you were lying. That wasn't a lie. There is a dress. Here you go. Meet Vera. Someone should get some use out of her. She is amazing. Yeah, she should be. She costs as much as a small car. Why didn't I buy a car? You know, a car doesn't silently mock you from the back of your closet for three years. Why does your wedding dress have a name? Well, I talk to it a lot, and, um, you know, if it didn't have a name, I would just feel crazy. You're not crazy. As long as wedding dress does not talk back to you. So, where does it come from? Well, uh, I was engaged once, and, uh, right before the wedding, there was just one little problem I realized. He wasn't the one, so I called it off. That must have created great unhappiness for you. Mm. Yeah, those were 83 mighty unpleasant phone calls. Oh, and I lost the cake deposit, too. <laughs> wow. Cake laws in this country are very strict. <laughs> hey, um, can we keep the story about my almost wedding just between you and me? You know, there's been enough truth in this house for one day. Hey, Mel. Lennox just told me some immigration guy was here at the house. Is everything okay? Yes, she saved us. And she also said she will perform our wedding. Really? You're going to marry me? Yeah. I mean, not just you, uh, both of you. <laughs> just sounded weird the way you said it. 
That's great, Burke. What made you change your mind? Oh, well, I couldn't just stand by and let... let Elena go to jail. <laughs> she also said kind things about you and defended you to that bad man. Oh, please. I doubt I'd be defending Joe. Does that sound like me at all? No, it doesn't sound like you at all, no. <laughs> well, thank you, Burke. All right, I'm gonna go uh, invite some of my gym buddies to the wedding. I'm gonna try to pass them off as some of my cousins. Although it's gonna be difficult, because, um, you know, those guys aren't as cut as I am. Oh, but who is? Well, yeah, no one I know. Yeah, like I'd be defending that. Thank you all for coming to this completely real and legitimate wedding. Please feel free to notch on our disaster supplies. We've got some great beef jerky, some water packets, um, but please leave the flares. <laughs> all right, we'll get started in just a minute. I can't believe you're not a mess. I always thought that when this day came, it would be you and Joe. Or better yet, me and Joe. And 50 white doves released into the air as everyone says, he's a lucky man. Yeah, okay, well, don't let this get around, Stephanie, but uh, this is a fake wedding. This is just to get Elena a green card. That's all it's about. And that's why we need the video to help sell it. You're not just saying all this to make me feel good? I would never do that. So I still have a shot with Joe? Let's just say your chances haven't changed. Yes. Hey, Joe. Hey. So this is it. Oh, you ready to take that big pretend step? Yeah. Is my time right? Close. Wow, you really uh, clean up nice, Longo. Thanks for doing this, Burke. Who says I'm doing it for you? I'm doing it for truth, justice, and, you know, sticking it to the man. Oh, thanks for sticking it to the man. Shall we? Yeah, let's get you married. For better or worse, but not for real. <laughs> How beautiful Joe looks. Uh, what about Elena? Tall show off. Oh, look at me, I'm the bride. Thank you, Ryder. Thank, thank. Unclench. Just so hard to watch her go. on you, handsome man. Okay, hey, hey, you two. Let's not oversell this whole we're really in love thing, okay? Let's remember why we're here. <laughs> Dear friends, we are gathered here today to unite this man and this woman. The most beautiful woman I have ever seen. If that is true, it is only because my heart is so full of love. I feel it too. Wow, they are so convincing. <laughs> this is all part of the act. <laughs> I'm losing confidence in my future as Mrs. Longo. <laughs> I can't believe this is really happening. I can't believe it either. What are you doing, Burke? I'm stuck in the plan. What are you two doing? Hey, Burke. Okay, fine. I lost my place. Will you just go to the good part, please? Okay. <laughs> no. Helena Romanov, do you take this man, Joseph Longo, to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. I object. What? Sidebar. So side. Hey, she can't officiate and object at the same time. Oh, yeah, it's my office. I can do anything I want. What the hell's going on? That's what I was gonna ask you. You said this was a rescue mission, not a love connection. Well, I thought it was too, but the truth is, I think I'm falling in love with her, Burke. You're falling in love with your fiance? Who does that? Well, you know, when, when, when she was walking toward me, looking the way she does in that dress. It's just a dress. I know, I know, but I, I, I saw more than the dress, Burke. I think, I think maybe I saw my future. Okay, wait, it's a dress, not a magic eight ball. Joe, this isn't what I signed on for. Your true love destroys the whole foundation of a sham wedding. Well, I think now it's a real wedding. Which is better for you anyway, right? Because everything's on the up and up. There's no scandal. Nobody gets hurt. Well, yeah, yeah, nobody. I mean, it's, it's a win-win now. Yeah, and everybody's happy, right? Yeah, everybody except... Stephanie. <laughs> Do you? Joseph Longo, take Elena Romanoff to be your legally wedded wife. Take your time, no pressure. I do. If 
final answer. I do. Okie dokie. By the power vested in me, blah, 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 I now pronounce you man and wife. No, 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 no time for any of that. This is a government office. I have a four o'clock with the head of sanitation. Uh, Stephanie will validate your parking. And don't try to sneak across the street to Target, because we tow. Back in the bag, Vera. Oh, quit mocking me. Hey, M.O. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. We're good. I'm super good and getting better. Yeah. And not talking the dresses, because that would make me crazy. You know, it's okay if you're upset about losing Joe. As a nanny. I don't care about Joe. You know, my life will go on without him. I don't need him. Oh, it's Joe. I mean, it, just Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe. How's the hotel room I paid for just to prove how okay I am with everything? Hey, Burke, I got a crazy question for you. Um, is Elena there at the house? No, what happened? I don't know. I mean, um, you know, we got here to the hotel and everything was going great. We were laughing, opened up a bottle of champagne, and then and she got this phone call and she stepped out in the hallway to take it, and the next thing I heard was a bunch of shouting in Russian. What was she saying? I don't know, on account of its Russianness. <laughs> and anyway, it, it got quiet and I went out there to see what was going on, and she wasn't there. And I've called her several times on her cell phone, but but she she didn't pick up. Oh, Joe. I know. This is bad, Burke. Okay, well, she'll be back. Yeah, she probably just ran out to get some honeymoon supplies, like breath mints and thank you notes. <laughs> you know what? You just sit tight. I'll go look for her. Elena's missing. The feds got her. <laughs> Relax, honey. This is probably just your garden variety runaway bride. Don't runaway brides usually run away before the wedding? Lennox, any woman involved with Joe Longo is always a flight risk. <laughs> Well, I looked all over town. I went to Little Moscow, the Toledo Tea Room, and then I went to Costco. Well, my wife is missing and, and, and you're out buying toilet paper in bulk? She loves Costco, okay? The long lines remind her of home. What if she doesn't come back, Burke? Oh, Joe, she'll come back. Holy crap, she's back! <laughs> Just as I predicted. Lena! Hey, I was so worried about you. What's, what's with the suitcase? What, are we gonna go on a real honeymoon? I have most saddest news. My co-worker, Constantine, who has done nothing wrong, will be blamed for Brodko's scandal. He will be falling man. Oh, you mean fall guy. Not important? Please continue. <laughs> he will go to jail unless I return to Russia and testify. No, 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 you can't, you can't go back there. It's not safe for you to return there. That's why we did this whole thing. Can't somebody else do it? What, what about Vladimir, huh? I believe him. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got a very honest uh, eyebrow. <laughs> He was whistle soccer. You mean whistleblower. Sorry, I'm really trying to stay out of this conversation. <laughs> Only my testimony will save Constantine. I must do as you've shown me. To save a friend, you went so far as to marry her. Yeah, but... But aren't we a little more than friends? Today, when I said I loved you, perhaps I was trapped up in the moment. Caught up. <laughs> Last one, I promise. <laughs> now I realize... We have not known each other long enough to be truly in love. Wow. How many guys get the um, let's be friends speech actually on their wedding night? The way you rescued me was so beautiful, like fairy tale. But now I must go back to reality. I must go back to Russia. Elena, wait a minute. Let me, let me at least drive you to the airport, okay? Because you're just. You're just too beautiful to take a taxi. Hey, you let me take taxis. <laughs> no, Joseph. This must be our goodbye, or I will not be able to leave you. Elena! Yes? I'll always have Toledo. Hey, Joe, I'm really sorry. I know it hurts now, but think about it. I mean, this was your plan all along, right? She was gonna go back to Russia, and you guys were just gonna be friends. I mean, naked online friends, but who am I to judge? Ah, she was right. You know, we didn't really know each other that well. I guess I just, you know, got caught up in the moment, too. 
just, you know, the whole idea of, you know, marriage and saving her and... God, the way she looked in that dress. Yeah, Vera will do that. No, Elena. Who's Vera? What? I didn't say Vera. Look, Joe, um, about that wedding dress. You know, a pretty wedding dress doesn't mean it's true love and it doesn't mean it's the right person. I know, but... You know, as crazy Burke as that for a minute, I thought she was the right person. I guess I was wrong. Anyway, on the upside, I, I could definitely rate this marriage better than my one to Tiffany. Yeah, and far cheaper. Yeah, there's that, too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Tiffany, Elena. <laughs> Maybe third time's a charm, huh? Yeah, to that poor woman, wherever she may be. Yes, to the third Mrs. Longo. <laughs> Probably in Fort Lauderdale right now, sucking some jello shots off her twin sister's abs. <laughs> or, uh, or taking her very first pole dancing lesson. Well, that's a special moment for anybody. Mm. You're a true romantic, Joe. Yeah, you know me so well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>